Despite putting together a team that was supposed to challenge in the West, the Lakers were an absolute disaster last season. Injuries hampered both LeBron and AD, Westbrook's uncertain role on the team turned heads every second. Westbrook going about it. Crowd kind of telling him no, and he missed it. The defense was a far cry from what it was in 2021, and the Lakers ultimately didn't even make the play in tournaments. And after a whole offseason of Kyrie Irving speculation, the Lakers are now stuck with what they have, and now it's pretty much do or die for the purple and gold. In this video, we'll detail how the offseason additions of Patrick Beverly, Lonnie Walker, and others will help the Lakers next season, Russ's impact and potential trades that could shake up the Western Conference, and the scary reality if the Lakers can't put it all together next season. Before we begin, be sure to leave a like on the video as each like makes a massive difference for the channel and also be sure to sub for more content like this. First and foremost, we need to talk about the Patrick Beverly trade and how awkward it could be. From the Lakers perspective, they're giving up potential for an immediate contributor in the backcourt next season. Pat Bev just came off an impressive season where he laid his impact on the defensive end of the floor and acted as a tone setter for his team. He's not a dynamic offensive player by any stretch, but he shot 38% from three for his career and 39% on catch and shoot threes last season, which is pivotal to playing with Braun, AD, and Russ. And while he is an underrated playmaker and ball handler, Beverly realizing what he is and what he's not is a big reason why this was a nice pickup for the Lakers. Additionally, his aforementioned perimeter defense is a great need for a team that struggled mightily on that end last season. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows given the fact that Russ has bad blood with Beverly. Pertaining to Russ, their beef dates back to the 2013 playoffs where a play from Beverly ended up sidelining Russ for the rest of the playoffs. A year where OKC were a 60 plus win team and had an excellent chance to win it all. And it's safe to say that their jabs at one another haven't subsided over the years. In 2019, Russ went as far to say that Patrick Beverly tricks everyone into thinking he's a good defender and that he just runs around and does nothing. And in JJ Reddick's podcast, Beverly went on to say that Russ's comments damaged his career. However, as the saying goes, winning cures all and these are professionals at the end of the day, so this should be water under the bridge as long as the Lakers enjoy success next season. Success that Thomas Bryant, Austin Reeves, and co. have to have a hand in. Thomas Bryant is obviously no stranger to the Lakers organization and provides a solid versatile piece at the five. When he wasn't limited due to injury, Bryant put up 12 points a game, shot 76% from the line, and shot 37% behind the arc from 2019 through 2021 in Washington. Not only that, he shot 40% from three in two of the last three seasons in Washington, which is ideal given a potential partnership with AD in the front court. He isn't an outstanding defender, and he did tear his ACL in the 2021 season. However, he's reportedly healthy and already has chemistry with Russ during their short stint together in Washington. Another former wizard joining the purple and gold is Troy Brown Jr a 6'6 wing capable of playing off the ball and providing a defensive presence on the wings. Earlier in his Washington days, he played more on the ball and showed to be a solid playmaker. But in Chicago, he adjusted to taking more of an off-ball role, playing next to DeRozan, Levine, and Lonzo. He isn't the greatest three-point shooter in the world, as he shot just 35% from three last season and 36% on catch-and-shoot attempts. But nonetheless, he and Toscano Anderson being suited in an off-ball role will be a solid benefit for this team. Juan Toscano Anderson's numbers will never jump off the page, but he's developed in Golden State to be a player that knows exactly how to impact a game. 
He's versatile defensively on the wings, shot 40% from three in 2021, and in the last 35 games of last regular season, he shot 42% from three. Not only that, the tutelage from the Warriors to move the ball with purpose and to move off the ball will prove invaluable for the Lakers. However, I believe this signing with the biggest boom or bust potential might be Lonnie Walker. Walker put up an impressive 12 points per game in just 23 minutes per game last season, but he shot just 31% from three, 33% on catching three-point attempts, 26% on pull-up three-pointers, and just 49% on two-pointers. Not only that, there's much to be desired on the defensive end as well. But under Darwin M, he can hopefully cut down on his inefficient mid-range attempts and continue to utilize his athleticism to attack closeouts and be a more adequate finisher at the rim. But enough about the new signings, how about the returning Lakers from last season? Well, Austin Reeves had a solid rookie season and we should only expect more out of him next year. Reeves led the entire Lakers in plus-minus, posted a 60% true shooting percentage, sacrificed his body to make plays, and does a little bit of everything for this Lakers team. I'm in no way saying that his 30-point triple-double at the end of last season makes him the second coming of Christ, but what I am saying is that the Lakers should have high expectations for this second-year player. Finally, Kendrick Nunn, if he can actually be available for this team, is a guard that can play on and off the ball, that can give you 15 points a night, shoot 38% from three, and 42% on catch and shoot three-point attempts. Moreover, the success of the LA Lakers next season is predominantly on the shoulders of LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook. I'm not going to dwell on LeBron too much, since at 37 years of age, he was still one of the best players in the league, and literally was the second leading scorer in the league behind Joel Embiid. But the Lakers are going absolutely nowhere if Anthony Davis can't be healthy and be a top 10 player in this league. People are starting to forget that Anthony Davis at his peak is a bona fide superstar that finished third in MVP voting a few years ago, was a demon on the defensive end of the floor, averaged 28, 10, and 4 on 38% from three during the 2020 playoffs, and was in the convo for the best big man in the league a while back. That's not to say that he hasn't been great over the last few seasons, but at this point of his career, he needs to flip the script and be the dominant force that he was two to three years ago. And last but not least, we have Russell Westbrook, easily the most divisive player on this roster. I do commend Russ for his availability last season and his ability to keep the Lakers alive at times in an underwhelming season. But the lack of accountability, plethora of turnovers, and being an unideal fit with his co-stars played a role in the Lakers' downfall last season, and it could persist next year as well. That's if the Lakers don't deal him to either Indiana or Utah. Westbrook's massive salary would be difficult to take on for any team with hopes to compete, but rebuilding teams like the Pacers and Jazz would appreciate picks and cap flexibility beyond next season. If the Lakers could send both the 2027 and 2029 picks to Indiana for Buddy Hield and Miles Turner, then the Lakers would for sure be a scary threat in the West. Hield is quite literally one of the best three-point shooters over the past six seasons and is obviously ideal playing next to LeBron and AD, and Miles Turner would be a great complement besides AD as a defensive stopper and as a floor spacer. And for the Jazz, a deal with picks and Russ's expiring deal for some combination of Conley and Bogdanovich could work. But all these deals are contingent on the Lakers' willingness to mortgage their future in order to compete now, and also depends on the willingness of both the Pacers and the Jazz. But if the Lakers don't deal Russ, then he'll have to take correction and solely focus on how he can add value to the team in order for the Lakers to succeed. As the title of this video suggests, it is definitely do or die for the Lakers this season given the age of LeBron James, the lack of developing young talent on the roster, and the excuses that the Lakers have had over the past few seasons. I completely understand that injuries are very unfortunate and obviously compromise your team's ability to win. 
but when they do become the norm, then it can no longer be used as an excuse. If LeBron and AD continue to miss significant time for a third straight season and the Lakers fail miserably in the Western Conference, then that would make four of LeBron's five seasons in LA to be an utter disaster. And at that point, the Lakers would have to think hard about keeping this core together. But if they can't stay healthy and turn it around, then the Lakers are in the conversation for Banner 18. With that being said, comment down below your expectations for the Lakers next season. Are they playoff locks when healthy? And also, are they serious title contenders in a league that's ever talented as it is? Also, what are your thoughts on the Lakers giving up THT and Stanley Johnson for Patrick Beverly? Let me know in the comment section down below. Be sure to leave a like on the video as each like makes a tremendous difference for the channel. And also, be sure to sub for more content like this. Hope to see you all in the next one and stay tuned.